Boom! What's going on, everybody? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk. Neo Scale Models has brought out in 164 scale the most sought after cab over truck ever. It's the Bullnose by Kenworth. They brought it out as a 521 two axle model and a 523 three axle model. Both versions come with the integral sleeper cab, which was very common on that truck. Now this video not only talks about both Neo versions, but it's also going to talk about some of the history of the real McCoys. So stay through the end to learn about both of those Neo versions. Please also take a moment to hit that big red subscribe button down right over there. That way you can get notified when all of my videos on diecast and resin models come out. I'd really appreciate it. Manufacturing the world's best heavy and medium duty trucks, Kenworth started way, way back in 1923 when a pair of mechanics named H.W. Kent and E.K. Worthington rolled their first truck out of their mechanic shop doors. Now we're going to skip on ahead to 1949, and that's when Kenworth introduced their 500 series of trucks. And these trucks were built all the way up until 1958. 500 series Kenworth trucks were offered in either a long nose conventional configuration or in a cab over engine configuration. The unique front end of the cab over engine model gave it its nickname, the bull nose. So if you are wondering about what a bullfrog and a Kenworth have in common, that's it. Neo, they first released a 1950 two axle bull nose 521 model sleeper truck. This was a huge hit with the collectors out there as it filled the void we have in our collections. It is painted light yellow and it has a black chassis underneath. It rides on five hole bud wheels on the rear and six hole bud wheels on the front and they are body matched yellow. Underneath the truck it has a detailed engine underneath, the drive shaft, the rear axle, and spring suspension. On the front of the truck, you'll see a silver painted bumper, silver painted hand grips so you can climb up and wash the windows, and it's got that beautiful Kenworth logo right there front and center. The grill on this one is photo etched, and the headlights are a individual jewel style. The turn signals on this guy are individual parts, and they are a somewhat clear amber color. On the roof, you'll see the roof lights are silver with the amber cup lenses on the front. It also has the traditional single air horn on the center of the cab. When we move around here to the passenger side, you can see that the exhaust stack is a single one and it is actually recessed into the cab, which is quite common for these trucks to give the maximum amount of loading space behind them. On the back of the truck, you'll see the three airlines and the fifth wheel, which is set up to accommodate the standard DCP and first gear trailers. So it's no problem to get a vintage trailer to haul behind this beauty. On the door, it reads TR Clark Cargo Services of Huntsville, Alabama, which makes sense that as to why it has an Alabama plate right there on the front of the truck. Over here, I've got a Kenworth brochure, and it's dated of January of 1951, and it said that the standard engine that was used in the Kenworth 500 series trucks was an HB600. However, there were many other engines offered back then. Just look at that artwork. All of that hand-drawn artwork, the marketing on trucks and everything was so cool way back in the 1950s and 60s. The 521 and the 523 cab over engine models had very short chassis under them. And without a sleeping compartment, the bull nose offered the greatest amount of loading space. The chassis of the 521 was a 
six wheel, two axle design, while the 523 was a 10 wheel, three axle design. Now, both the long nose conventional and the cab over bull nose use the same model numbers for the configurations. This might be somewhat confusing, but it came back down to the fact that the Kenworth engineers used the same chassis under both trucks. So that made it simplicity in manufacturing and it made it easy for the dealers to stock repair parts to fix the chassis because they only had one set of parts to fix both cab overs and conventionals. Since the cab of the bull nose was rigidly mounted to the frame, this cab didn't tilt like other cab overs of the time. Service to the engine, though, wasn't too difficult because the engineers really thought things out. It could be serviced through the floorboards on top of the engine. It could be serviced from the bottom of the engine. It could also be serviced from both sides. Or, if the need arise to take the motor out, the grill and the radiator were designed to be re easily removed, and you just pluck the engine straight out of the front. Another note that the engineers were really thinking about was for driver comfort. The Bullnose was one of the few trucks that was available with an integral sleeper, which was designed for the driver's creature comfort and ability to run those long hauls. The second release of a Bullnose from Neo was a three axle, 10 wheeler model 523. It also has the integral sleeper and most of the details on this one are exactly the same except for the chassis is a little bit longer on this one to accommodate the extra axle. It's got twin fuel tanks. This time they're painted silver while the frame is painted black. It rides on five hole bud wheels in the rear and six hole buds on the front. It is a beautiful, beautiful purple and white paint scheme. It's got a silver bumper with a Wyoming license plate on it. And of course that Kenworth logo is front and center, right there above the grill. You can see the battery boxes over here and the beautiful graphics on the door. It reads Redford Carriers, Moving and Storage Company of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Makes sense. That would definitely explain that Wyoming license plate on the front. Also, you can tell it's got the same fifth wheel so that it'll hitch up to any of the vintage trucks without any problems. These guys would actually look pretty good with the old top shelf replicas 40 foot uh, livestock trailer hitched up behind them. Neo scale models, Bullnose Kenworth, which came out both as a 521 two axle and a 523 three axle. Now these trucks were in a plastic display box. They were screwed down to a black plastic base with a clear plastic cover. And then they were put into a hardboard sleeve. That way, if you wanted to display them in the box, you had a nice display box where they would stay dust free. Or you could take the trucks right off of that uh, display box and put them out on your shelf or into your diorama. Since the antique truck shows this year have pretty much been all wiped out, why don't we set up and have us a antique truck show on our dioramas. Neo Scale Models has made enough vintage cabs that we can cover pretty much a great show. If you guys know anything at all about the trucking companies that I just reviewed of those trucks that were made by Neo, please drop it down in the comments below. I'm a huge vintage trucks fan and would love to know what you guys happen to know about them because finding information about any of the 50s trucking companies is very hard to come by these days. Most of it has been lost to the hands of time, and the stories are gone. I would really love to know what you guys know. The Kenworth Cab Over 521 and 523s were widely popular because they had that short chassis, which gave them a short turning radius to turn these trucks around. Sitting up a little bit higher, the cab over gave the driver much greater visibility so they could really see the road in front of them. And the creature comforts that Kenworth put into their trucks, well, such as they were back in the 1950s, but they were real comforts for the drivers. Kenworth went a step above and beyond all the other trucking companies out there to make sure the drivers had a comfortable ride. Today, 
these trucks are huge hits at the antique truck shows. This year has been kind of tough on those truckers and the trucking shows because of the lockdowns and the bans on gathering. However, most of them are going to come back next year and they're really going to need your support to keep them going. That way you can go out and see all those beautiful restored trucks. So if there's one in your area, please make plans to go see it and enjoy all the hard work these guys put into restoring those trucks. And I'm willing to bet you you'll find one or two Kenworth Bullnoses out there where the drivers have taken pride in restoring them and really want to show them off so that you guys can see them. I've hoped you guys have enjoyed this video today. And I've got for you a report on valuing your collection. It details what all you need to look for in pieces that will add future value to your collection. After all, don't you want your collection to appreciate and be a living asset for you in the future in case you ever need it? Grab my free report down in the link in the description below and it'll tell you what you need to look for. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. And if you know anybody who would enjoy this topic, please go on and share this video with them. And if you can think of any other of my videos that they'd enjoy, share those with them too. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk.